Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp and Corumba Fungicides and Pride Seeds. All right, joining us here on uh, Real Agriculture for this episode of uh, the Corn School, we're pleased to have Jeanette Gauthier, Tech Services with BASF. Corn is moving along quickly, but so are the weeds. What are we seeing in terms of weed issues, herbicide treatment issues in 2020? So this is uh, one of the research plots at our research station, and this corn in particular only got an in-crop pass. So at BASF, we tend to, to recommend having a two-pass system in corn, knowing that it does have a long critical weed-free period. So we can see here looking at the plot um, that definitely when we do skip that pre-seed, which was a little bit of a challenge this year, um, that, that definitely when we do go in with our in-crop, we are dealing with larger weeds and higher weed pressure. And so that really does put, um, you know, it really sets up, doesn't set up the in-crop herbicide. And one uh, weed in particular that's inside the plots here is lamb's quarters. We've had a, it's been a challenging weed, I would say for the last two years. Just seems with our dry conditions, it really seems hardened off. And so trying to come in and, and manage some of those larger, larger lamb's quarters in your corn can be very difficult if you don't have a, a setup treatment. Okay, we're into early July and everybody's taken their uh, knee high by July picture. That should also coincide, I guess, with checking that weed population underneath the canopy that you can't see from the road? Absolutely. So we do love going in and, and checking to see what's in our corn. Uh, we do know that some of the challenging weeds for corn can be some of the warm season grasses. So making sure that you do have a product that covers off grassy weed control. Um, and in ad addition to that, uh, the lamb's quarters that I mentioned, but also kochia has been a really big issue this year. So um, another thing that goes with our two pass system is that we're generally recommending that something be thrown in the tank with glyphosate. Um, corn's a great opportunity to, to get away from your group one and group two rotation and really throw in some uh, unique mode of actions. So uh, we do have here some products that do work really well on, on grasses. So there are some residual products in corn that you can use. Um, there's also uh, some products with unique mode of actions, you know, our group fives, our group 27s, for example, uh, that can really help with our volunteer canola management in corn. Um, kochia as well, we can use some group fours, uh, making sure that we are targeting the correct staging in corn with those to help manage some of those populations. Now you're holding a uh, plant in your hand. Uh, we have seen some issues with floppy corn or corn that doesn't want to stay standing. We can see that already at this point in the growing season. Can you take us through that issue and, and maybe some of the causes or, or reasons for that? Absolutely. So not really having that issue here, although um, it was a challenging spring for sure. I feel across the prairies, especially for corn, we did have that cool spring and then we hit some really hot temperatures and fluctuating temperatures. Um, so there was a lot of calls about corn that was leaning over, uh, you know, some floppy corn exactly was how it was described. Um, so we do attribute that largely to rapid growth syndrome. Uh, so something that we see is that when we do get uh, cool conditions and then right after that some really warm conditions, corn grows really quickly. So of course it does love those, uh, those warm temperatures and it really just can't keep up with itself in terms of growth. So stock strength for a few days will be pretty weak and it'll flop over. The winds we had this spring didn't help either. You might notice a lean in your corn uh, in the direction of the, of the winds. Uh, but in, in most cases, you will find that your corn bounces back really well as well. Um, and then just managing corn. I know people were saying that their corn was a little bit stressed and wondering about herbicide application. Uh, weed control is really important in corn. It can be one of the big limiting factors for yield. So uh, we wouldn't recommend skipping uh, herbicide application if you're worried about stressed corn. Really, it's just about making sure that you're putting on uh, the right rate at the right timing. And that's another reason why I'm holding the corn here. Uh, something that's pointed out often about uh, the, the product labels for corn herbicides is that we indicate uh, up to a stage, but we don't say how to stage your corn. So I know for BSF, for example, we usually use the leaf over method uh, on our labels. So when you see that uh, Armazon, for example, can be applied up to seven leaf, 
you know, we look here and we're just counting all the leaves that are over. So this corn happens to be nine leaf over. So we're a bit out of stage for that. Um, but yes, very important to look at the label and be sure to talk to the, your company representative to see how their label addresses corn staging. What about the, the brace roots? Should we look at that part of the plant too? Yeah, I feel like when you are going out to scout your corn after your in-crop application, that's another thing you should be looking at. Uh, brace roots are really important uh, for corn standability, uh, really replacing this root system. Um, you know, the initial seminal roots that are growing as the seeds coming out of the ground. So we're looking for some really good uh, brace root development. I mean, that can be another reason for floppy corn. So making sure that there is some good brace root development and some of the other things this spring, I mean, there was some really wet fields uh, that can inhibit group growth, for example. Um, just making sure that you have adequate uh, nutrition and then just checking on these roots to make sure that that isn't part of your problem and something that needs to be addressed in future years. All right. Any other message or, or final message then for corn growers as we head into the rest of the season here in Trinidad? I think it's looking good. So uh, definitely be out checking your weeds. You do want to know what spectrum you do have to best choose. I feel like we have a really stand up uh, product lineup out west for corn. It does differ from Ontario and it does differ from the States. So definitely talk to your company rep and see what uh, fits your corn crop the best.